my name is Ashley Brandon, also known as the Crazy Keto Babe, and y'all know I love talking about health and wellness, but part of health and wellness is not just what we're putting in our body, but also what we're consuming. Um, so whether it's books, whether it's social media, where, whether it's um, anything and everything that affects our minds um, is just as important as our health and wellness, right? So I decided, and it was put on my heart, honestly, God put it on my heart to start sharing more about the things that I have learned and developed and um, picked up in my time since I've started doing personal development, which I never did before. Um, and I do now. And I'm learning all these things and I'm not sharing them with people. Um, so I am basically squandering away one of my gifts that God gave me. So here I am, gonna start sharing and I pray that you'll follow along with me. Keep watching and learning and um, sharing with people, right? Because um, that's what it's all about, right? Is sharing the good word, uh, things that we've learned, picked up, and can help others. Really, that's that's what I'm here for. That's what I love to do. So um, I want to start today talking about angel investors. And I'll define what that is later, but first I want to start by telling you, um, or asking you a question, actually. Have you ever thought about how Jesus and his 12 disciples were able to travel all around, sharing the good word, helping and talking to thousands of people and helping people, helping the blind be healed, you know, and people walk again. And um, how did they do that financially? Because it, it says nowhere in the Bible that God provided for that. Like, obviously he provided for it, but there was no miracle provisions, right? There was no manna brought down from heaven for them. Somebody financed it. Um, and the 12 disciples gave up their job to follow Jesus and do this with him, right? Jesus wasn't working as a carpenter still. So who financed it? Let me read you this passage, which got me really, really, really excited when I started to read it um, today. I'm going to put my glasses on because I'm blind. All right. Soon after Jesus began a tour of nearby towns and villages, preaching and announcing the good news about the kingdom of God, he took his 12 disciples with him, along with some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Among them were Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's business manager, Susanna, and many others who were contributing from their own resources to support Jesus and his disciples. Let me slow down here. <laughs> Did you catch that? Um, let's see. Among them were Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's business manager, Susanna, and many others who were contributing from their own resources to support Jesus and his disciples. Okay, did you catch that? Ladies, three women, three women's names were listed and who financially made Jesus's walk and sharing and his 12 disciples, not just him, but his 12 disciples made it financially possible. Like I find that amazing. Okay. So an angel investor is someone who provides seed money for a startup, right? Now well, this is a, what Jesus did not to, you know, compare apples to oranges, but it was a startup, right? He needed the financially, um, the resources to make it happen. Well, these women were a part of the group that made it happen. And not only that, but three women were named by name in this. Like, that's amazing. Um, you know, there's not a ton of women who are named in the Bible. Um, and I just think that that's just super, super powerful. Um, Jesus and his disciples depended upon these people to make this walk, this sharing, this, you know, talking to thousands to make it possible. Like I find that so amazing. And being a female entrepreneur, I just think it's a real, that's a really cool connection, right? So um, I hope to one, ba one day be able to also seed, you know, and be an angel investor to something for God's kingdom. You know, I, I think that there's a lot of stigma about entrepreneurs and making money. And I think that it's all about how you, what you do with that money, right? So one of my huge goals is to be able to, to give back financially an amount that I couldn't have dreamed of before to, to finance, you know, kingdom causes and missions and to be able to go on missions and do things like that. Um, and I think 
it's really, really powerful when you look at that, that these women use their finances to fund Jesus and his 12 disciples. I think that's amazing and so powerful, right? So these, um, not only did they invest in Jesus and his 12 disciples, but that means that Jesus and his 12 disciples were able to touch other people and invest in other people. So their financial investment led to investing in others by sharing the good word with them, right? Sharing about Jesus and God and what they could do and saving how many people. Like that is just beyond amazing that these women's finances contributed to that, had a huge contribution to that. Um, so, I mean, the Jesus and his 12 disciples had a huge job that influenced so many. And these ladies were part of making it financially possible. Um, and, you know, these ladies really were the light. You know, they really were being the light that God calls us to be. And I think that we hear that a lot as Christians, be the light, be the light. And, or that we are the light, you know, and I love that song by Carrie Jo, we are the light, we are the light, right? Um, but sometimes it could be a little overwhelming and we want to be the light, but we just don't really know how, or we don't see the opportunity to be that. Like, we're like, I, I, I don't see how I can help people. I don't see people that I can help on a day-to-day -day basis or financially, I can't be the light. I can't help people. And so I want to talk about that today as well, because these women were legitimately a light, right? That made so much happen that, you know, their trickle and ripple effect rippled all the way to me. You know what I mean? Like all these people were brought into the kingdom that eventually led to the people who helped me get saved. And now that I want to help others. So it's like an upline and a downline of a amazing women, right? So, and men, of course. But, um, so I just want to talk today about, about being the light and how these women were the light and how, yes, they did financially contribute, but how we can be the light. Um, and so I just want you to know that small blessings make a huge difference, right? Um, I remember one time somebody paid for our dinner. Um, it was me and my husband and my son, and I guess he was good throughout the meal. And this older couple um, paid our bill and just said to, said to tell us that our son was so well behaved and so cute and so good. They just wanted to do something nice for us. And I just remember the feeling of that because we didn't have a lot of money. <laughs> we probably shouldn't have been eating out, but I was exhausted and just did not have the patience to cook dinner or the, just the mental capability. And then we go to the restaurant and that happens like that man, that small blessing was such a miracle, um, to us in that moment. Um, and you know, I hope that it was, and well, I know that it was God that prompted them to do that. So small blessings really matter. And I know we're talking about on a large scale, these women financially contributed hugely to Jesus and his 12 disciples, but small blessings are just as important, right? So here's the thing. If we want to be the light, let's first start thinking about the times like that when somebody was the light to us, right? When somebody blessed us. Um, so first, if you get out a notebook, you could journal times that people were a blessing to you. Think of when you were blessed, needed help, you know, maybe times where people's people acted kindly towards you, um, who went out of their way to help you. And then what about people who sacrificed for you? Um, there's, there's so many times in your life, if you really start to think about it, that you were blessed. Um, I think we live in a very, very negative world and we tend to think more negatively than positively, but this is a really powerful way to start your day or to really just, um, get out of the funk is to start thinking of all those times that you were blessed, because I promise you there was many, and it doesn't have to be financial right? It could be somebody giving you a compliment or just helping you or holding the door for you. Those things are just as important and especially on days when we need it the most. So I want you to make that list. You can do it in your head. Like if, that, if you're not a write it down kind of girl, do it in your head or guy. Um, but how about we start flipping that blessing? What if we take that and we go, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to help others like others have helped me um, and, and take that opportunity to bless others like you've been blessed. And, and it doesn't have to be exactly the same. Make it your own. Make it creative. Get creative. Make it your own. Um, but I remember that one Christmas, we, um, my mom and I and my sister, um, I was single, she was a single mom at the time, got an envelope with a check in it at Christmas time. 
No idea. I don't think it was a check. Maybe it was like a cashier's check or something because we didn't know who it came from. Um, I just remember mom crying because she got a check. She got money and she was able to get us Christmas presents. Um, and it's all a little fuzzy because I don't have the best memory. <laughs> but um, I do remember the feeling, right? Because it's not about the money. It's not. I don't even know how much money it was. It was the feeling of seeing my mom cry with happiness because she could provide for us for Christmas even if it was something small. Like... I want to take that and flip it because that was how I was uniquely blessed as a kid. Um, and, and it was, you know, it was through my mom, but still it, it all counts. So, um, take that and use it. But here's the thing. Sometimes we think, well, I'd love to do that, but I don't see the opportunity. I don't have the opportunity to do that. Okay. Well, that is because we are super busy. We are always running from here to there and everywhere, especially as mamas, like daddies do too, especially as mamas. Uh, though I just wanna say like, coming from experience, uh, maybe we have a full-time job, maybe we don't, maybe we work from home, but either way, we've got kids, we've got bath time, we've got dinner time, we've got a house to keep clean, we've gotta run kids from soccer to dance, from dance to, I don't even know karate. Like. We are running 24 seven, right? We're always running. We always feel like we don't have time. So we're doing this and we're running from the next point, from one point to the next, right? We have our blinders on. We've got that tunnel vision. And so all I'm saying is to say, to pray about it, right? Pray for an opportunity to see things. Pray for an opportunity to take those blinders off, to open that tunnel vision so that we see things around us. And a really good example of this is uh, the Good Samaritan, right? How many people walk by the, the injured man on the street, naked and bleeding? How many people walk by him because they were like this? With the tunnel vision, with the blinders on, right? But he had the vision to see the man on the side of the road. And not only that, but take the opportunity to help him, right? So um, a lot of times opportunity seems like inconveniences. Can you imagine how inconveniencing that was for a good Samaritan who wasn't even supposed to be helping that man? Who that man probably, if he was awake, would have told him not to help him because of, um, you know, just the religious differences back then. Um, but how much of a inconvenience that was, but he still did it. And it's a story we tell today. Everybody knows the story of the good Samaritan. Can you imagine how inconveniencing that was? So why don't we just take a minute to be a little inconvenience to take the opportunity to be Jesus's light. Like I can't even imagine if we all tried to do that, how the difference and the ripple effect that we would have, right? Um, so I want to tell a story really quickly. Um, it's actually in this book. It's called, and I'm taking a lot of this from the book called Double Blessing by Mark Batterson. Um, I love his entire book series. It's amazing. If you are looking for a book series, a Christian book series, guys, go get it. You'll send me a message that says, oh my gosh. And I'll say, I know, <laughs> because that is how amazing he is. He's such a good author. So relatable, um, tells amazing stories like the one I'm going to tell you now. All right. So this is actually from a book that he read called, Were You Were Born for This by Bruce Wilkerson. And so he shared that he was in Johanna, Africa, Johannesburg, Africa, South Africa. And late one night after a speaking event, Bruce and his son were had a strong craving for ice cream. Uh, I don't know about you, but I know what it's like to have a strong craving for ice cream and to just want some ice cream, especially after a long day. I definitely try not to because it's a lot of sugar, but <laughs> no judgment here because I've been there, right? And so, um, it's, so they went to an ice cream shop, but it was closing, but he was like, please, please, please. And the waitress was like, I'll see what I can do and brought him out some ice cream. Well, Bruce has what he calls a God pocket and it's filled with money. There's no certain amount. It's just filled with money. And so he wanted to bless this lady who made this happen for him. And he left her every bit of money that was in his God pocket as a tip. And they tried to run out without her catching them, but she caught them. And I just want to read this to you for a second because what she said was so powerful. It stopped me in my tracks. And that's why I'm talking to you today. <laughs> she said, you know Jesus, don't you? With tears in her eyes, she said that, and Bruce did not deny it. He, then she said, this is a miracle. I have a baby, and we couldn't pay rent, and the landlord is going to kick us out of our apartment tomorrow morning. I prayed to God on the way to work just this afternoon. Please, God, send us the money, or we'll be living on the street. She wiped away her tears and said, Sir, this amount is exactly the rent I owe. 
to the Rand, which was the finance, the currency in there in Johannesburg. That's how I knew you knew Jesus. Wouldn't it be wonderful if people knew that we knew Jesus by the tips we left? And that's why I, I just, I thought that was so powerful. And I read that today and then I was like, because I, I, you know, I am not perfect, but I really try, I really, really have started trying to, to do that, to kind of be the light. And, um, on Thanksgiving, my husband had a stomach bug or food poisoning. We're still not sure. And, um, I don't go out on Thanksgiving. I don't like shopping on Thanksgiving. I think people should be able to have, be home with their families. I don't do Black Friday shopping or anything like that on Thanksgiving, but we had an uh, emergency going on in the house and I had to run out and get something and I was out of gas. And here where I live in Oregon, um, there is a gas attendant that pumps your gas for you by law. And so this man was standing outside waiting on people and pumping their gas for them. And it was 29 degrees. It was so cold. And here he is walking over with a smile and, and pumping my gas. And, um, you know, I just had the, one of those prompt things from God that was like, you have cash in your wallet. And I don't always listen, but I've tried really, really hard to listen. Um, and I did. And I grabbed, it was a 20. And I grabbed a 20 out of my wallet. And when he came to say, have a good day, happy Thanksgiving, I told him happy Thanksgiving and handed it to him. And he looked down at it and the smile on his face was just worth it. You know, it just was worth it. So I hope that I blessed him, but he blessed me. He blessed me with the best feeling in the world. And I hope that that $20 was, was something he really needed. Or that I helped in some kind of shape, way, shape, or form. But really, God orchestrated that opportunity, right? Um, so the opportunities are there. And they don't have to be financial. And that's where most people get stuck. They're like, well, I don't have any extra money. Well, your time and talent is just as important. Um, so, but not only that. And I mean that in the church. Like, if you can't tithe where you want to, how you want to tithe. Or if you can't give any more than you're like, I literally am scra scraping by and have penny pinching right now. Okay, what about your time and your talents? Um, can you sing? Can you join the worship group? Can you sit in the kids' nursery and help with the kids? Your time and talent is just as important. Um, so definitely, you know, think about that. That's off subject. But I also want to say that it doesn't have to be financial. You don't have to just bless people financially. Like I, like, like I said earlier, giving somebody a compliment is amazing. When I, somebody gives me a compliment, I'm like, thank you. You know, when somebody says my hair looks good, I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you. I worked so hard on this. <laughs> or maybe I didn't, but thank you. But um, you know what I mean? A compliment goes a long way. And in this day and age, a smile, smile at people. Look up and smile at people as you're walking past them. Maybe they are a little crazy. Who cares? Maybe you are. I am, but that's okay. Because you know what? Somebody may get a smile and they haven't in weeks. Or, give, or the compliment, they may have not heard a kind word in a really long time. You know what I mean? Um, holding the door for somebody, helping somebody, taking their cart or their buggy back to the buggy holder thing so that they don't have to. Or help, maybe holding the door for a mom who's juggling bags and a toddler that likes to run into the street. Like all these things are helpful. They do help and sometimes they are the biggest blessing and you wouldn't even know it. You don't know what's happening in someone's life. So just take the opportunity. Look for the opportunity. Take the blinders off and let's be the light, y'all. Like, let's be what Jesus called us to be. Let's be like these angel investor women and Mary Magdalene who was there at the crucifixion. Like, because she invested, not just financially, but her time and talent with Jesus. Man, she was the first one to see him when he resurrected. That's really amazing, guys. So ladies, you working a side hustle, you're working a job, you're just working at home trying to keep those kids alive. Like, you got this. You got this. Let's take an opportunity to bless others because not only does that make you feel amazing, it's a blessing to you. It's a, it's a double blessing like the book. Um, and I also really quickly before I stop, want to say to take care of yourself. Um, so you know how I feel about health and wellness. Like what you put in your mouth is literally what fuels your body, every single cell in your body. Um, so if you're putting a bunch of chemicals and, and, and products that are made with a bunch of chemicals with a whole list of things that you can't even pronounce, uh, yeah. So all I'm saying is when the opportunity happens as much as you possibly can, let's try to eat some clean, clean food, whole food, like 
food with one ingredient. <laughs> okay, like a vegetable um, that's not in a can. <laughs> like, um, just try, guys. Tiny little things make a huge difference. Water. Drinking more water. You'll be shocked at how much better you feel, how much better your brain is, which means you'll be able to multitask more. You'll be less stressed, less frustrated. Water is the key to our bodies. There's so much biblically about water. It's ridiculous. Hydrate. Um, and not only that, but take care of your bodies, but also take care of your mind. Do some personal development, guys. Like, read some books that help you, that make you feel good. Watch a YouTube video. I'm pointing at my computer. That's why I'm pointing this way. Watch a YouTube video that's inspiring. There's so many out there. Download an audiobook. Listen to it as you're driving kids all around from Timbuktu. All these things are completely possible and we can fit them in our day. We can if we really, really wanted to. If you wanted it to be a priority to feel better and to grow as a person, you could fit it in. So for me, that means I get up 30 minutes before my kids do so that I can sit down with a book and my coffee and take time for me. Because you've heard this, you can't pour from an empty cup. Here's another one. Put your oxygen mask on first before you help others. When I do this, I'm a better mom. I'm working on offense. I'm not playing defense. I'm up before the kids. I'm awake. They aren't running the house. Mama's running the house. <laughs> and she's doing it in a good mood because she's already had her coffee. And she's, I have read a book about, for me, I love reading about Jesus or getting into a devotional. That makes a huge difference in my day. Starting the day with God, best way to start it. So I hope you all have an amazing, amazing day. Share this if you know somebody who needs to hear it. If you want to hear it or if you know somebody who um, could use some of this as well or if you liked it and you just want to share it. But um, let's go out there and be the light, y'all. Have an awesome day.